Hello, New Hope. Pastor Weaver coming to you. I hope you'll give me a few minutes and actually listen to this, please. I'd really appreciate it. Our 30 year anniversary is coming up and of course it brings a lot of emotions and thoughts and feelings. Uh, it's a week from this Sunday, October 4, and that Friday night the second we're having a banquet. And the banquet's about winning people to Jesus, which is what this whole church is about, you know. Uh, keeping our eyes focused on heaven, uh, not, not on the things of the earth, but eternal matters and, and seeking first the kingdom of God and taking as many people to heaven with us as possible, right? So obviously the best thing to do on a 30 year anniversary is have the missions banquet that night. And we're doing that Friday night, uh, October 2. And uh, then we're having, uh, and we're having one of the best speakers you've ever heard uh, for that banquet, Pastor Lindell from James River Church in Springfield, Missouri. And we're having our uh, general superintendent, the head of the Assemblies of God uh, from Springfield, Missouri come on that Sunday, uh, Reverend Doug Clay. And we're very excited uh, about that. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to share with you that, um, you know, I don't feel like that I had really anything to do with this church happening. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I've never had numerical goals. I have to say that God spoke to me in four days of fasting and prayer before I started this church that he just needed a pastor. And I knew what that meant because I have a pastor's heart. And he said, I'll build my church if you'll just be a pastor. And that's what we do. That's what I hire. People that care about relationships and people that pastor. And you have a great team, a wonderful team of pastors. I mean, and think of the number of years they've been with us in this church. They are this church. And the lay people that have stayed all 30 years, many of them that came early on in the first year are still here, almost all of them, unless they've moved away. And um, it's, it's an really an incredible, amazing church. And uh, I always want to thank you for being the church. And I do have a message I want to share, but I just want to mention a few more things before I get to that. And I'm going to be at Philippians 3 in just a moment. One is that we've got to continue to do what God's called us to do. We can't look back and live back there. We, we have a glance back at 30 years, but this is to reset the future. And as pastors, we're committing to fast and pray to hear God for the future because our goals haven't changed. Our goals of systematic education in the Bible so we're not biblically illiterate, to commit to being a, a people that study the Word of God, both the discipleship small groups as well as in Sunday school, and graded to teach our children, and to worship God in spirit and truth, and to be a full gospel church that believes in the gifts and the fullness of the Spirit of God, to live selfish. And one of our hallmark tenets is the fact that we serve, we, we attend, but we serve, not just with giftings, but we serve with working. That means the yard, that means the nursery, that means cleaning, that means so many things. It's an amazing, We've had, we have a, a, a culture of 80 to 90% of our people that all are serving somewhere. And if you're new, if you've been here, if you're not serving, you need to plug in because that's God's heart. He's given us a work to do. He's given us a calling. He's given us giftings. He's given us abilities. And we need, to, we need to plug in to those things and be a part of the church. And when you come to attend service, attend a service, but either come early and serve at a service and then attend afterwards. There's no reason why we can't give an extra hour, an hour and a half to serve on a Sunday and give ourselves. We should never be begging for helpers. And so with that in mind, we have an eight o'clock service with kids that come and little ones that come and we need, we need people that are served. And in the near future, we would love to offer Sunday school again, but some for medical reasons really can't put themselves in a classroom situation to teach. So some of you that can, maybe you're younger, maybe you're, you know, you can be there and you can help. So why don't you call us up? Why don't you offer, serve, we, we need you and you need us. And another thing is, you know, we've been doing this uh, in live service since the third week of May and we can't trace one case of COVID back to people getting it here at the church. We cannot, we, in fact, most people that get it, they weren't even here the week before. And so uh, we're thankful for that. But let me just tell you something. We are spacing, we are cleaning 
And there's room in, in, in the services, especially the 8 and the 11. The 9.30, there's still room, but it's probably the fullest service. And we offer this service because many people mentioned because of health reasons or because they're taking care of elderly parents, it would be nice to have a service where everyone wears a mask. So we're doing that at 9.30 in the auditorium, our former sanctuary building. And I'm there most of the time during that time. And I love it. And people are loving it and they're coming. So maybe that's you. You'd like to come on out because there's something about worshiping together. And my concern is... Is, is that when we're not together, we, before long, we quit watching service. We quit worshiping during service and we grow distant and it's so slow we don't know it. But I want to encourage you, be the church. We need each other. Be the church. You know, God hasn't given us fear. And I don't believe we're, we're living in fear. I'm not saying that. But God spoke to me a message for this hour is that we are not afraid. We're not people of fear, but faith. And that, that to get right with God and stay right with God and don't be afraid and then move forward. Don't stall and go, well, we got to wait and blow, see this blow over to see what we do next. No, we're not changing the thing. We're moving forward. We're not going to back up. We're not going to stand still. We are attacking because right now people are more aware of their, of their humanity than they've ever been before. They're more aware of that they are fragile and they could die. And people are, a lot of people are living in fear and our voice and our testimony and how we live and what we say matters more now than ever. And the world needs us. They need us to attack in the spirit realm and to pray and bind the enemy. They need people to, to pray. We have prayer Tuesday through Friday at 7 a.m. here. Or if you're like me, that's not a good time. Then you make a time every day to pray and pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Pray for everyone that, you know, that from the president down to the mayor in the local communities. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our military. Pray for our church leaders. Pray and let joy be your message. Message. Let peace be your message. We're, we don't have to be downhearted. We don't have to be depressed. We can have confidence. We focus on the things ahead. We look upward. We keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, and we don't back up. We're not going to back up. And that's why we're moving forward. And uh, I, I need to reopen my verse here. Here we go. And that's why we're moving forward as a church. And we're not going to stand still. That's why we're putting in the parking lot. We're getting ready because this church is going to have cars everywhere. And that's been a struggle for us. In this COVID thing, we will get by it. We will be back together. That We will be in every pew and not every other pew in the near future. I believe that that's going to blow. Maybe it's six months. Maybe it's eight months. Maybe Maybe it's 10 months, but eventually we're going to get by this and we're going to continue to move forward. And in the meantime, if we have to add a fourth service, a fifth service, a sixth service so we can space, we're going to do what it takes. We're going to work till Jesus comes. So you're with me. Now I want you to know that this church isn't about me. When I started, I prayed, God, don't let it be about me. How can I make it not about me? And the, and the Lord spoke to me clearly, give people keys. And hundreds of you have keys because it's your church. We are the church. I'm a part of it and I'm a leader. I'm a, one of the pastors. We're all pastors and we're all equally responsible and we all equally, it's our church. It's not my church that the pastors work for me. We're all pastors and we have leaders in the church. We have great leaders in this church. And you know what? We're not backing up and giving. We're not going to back up, quit taking new missionaries. A lot of pastors and missionaries are telling them, they call, well, we're not taking on any missionaries. No. We, if we're going out to eat, we can give more to missions. We're going to be a missions giving church and we're going to keep giving more and more and more to missions. We're not backing up because that's one of our DNA moments. We're a missions church. So we're going to do that. Are you with me here? Are you with me? And we're not going to back up from moving forward and building out what we believe is the greatest elementary department ever and converting our current elementary department to adult ed, which we're very short on and having offices actually for our pastors instead of three of them sharing the same office. We're going to move forward. We need this building. So be faithful to honor God. It comes with the windows of heaven pouring out, blessing upon you and protection and pushing back the devourer so he doesn't come against you as you honor God with the first fruits, with your tithe and you give the missions and you're generous as the spirit leads you with benevolence. You're doing great. Let's don't back up. Okay, let's move forward. And so some of you think, well, this church is about me. But guess what? It's not. That's why I don't preach 
God spoke to me about 14 years ago to slow down that I'm the one doing all the preaching and to start adding people in. And like a big ship, I've slowly brought more and more and more. And most of you are on board and understand that every one of these guys are growing. We edit their sermons. We look at them. We encourage them. We give them feedback. They're getting better and better and better. We're growing up great pastors in a nation that is, has a drought of great pastors. And we're not going to compromise the truth either. We're not compromising it at all. We're going to move forward because as you heard Pastor Jeff preach about sin and the week before, and that sin is the cancer that destroys the nation and righteousness blesses the nation. We're not going to be silent, but also we're not going to be a, a legalistic, mean church that preaches hell, fire, and brimstone in a way that's condemning. We're going to show them with grace the truth that will set them free because that's what Jesus is about. And we're going to keep moving forward for the next 30 years. Yes, we will glance back and look, but guess what? We're moving forward. We're pressing on, which brings me to Paul's words when he looked at his life and people were pointing to him how he was something. He says, in the flesh, maybe I can boast about a few things, okay? And I suppose I could and many pastors have, but he goes, that's not who does it. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. So listen to his words. He talks about, if anyone thinks they have grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. And then he lists all the things that Paul did. And then he jumps down to, he says, but whatever was gained to me, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Christ. More than that, I count all things as lost compared to the surpassing excellence of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I've lost all things. I give all things for that. And he said, those things, I consider them rubbish of things that I may gain uh, and that Christ and be, be found that I might be found in him, not having my own righteousness from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God on the basis of faith. Listen, you can be wrong about certain theological things, but you can't be wrong about Jesus. That's why there's a lot of people in churches that they're right about Jesus and they've been taught wrong about other theological points of view. Guess what? They're going to go to heaven, but you can be right theologically and not have it right with Jesus and miss heaven because Jesus changes the heart, my friend. He changes the way you view this world. He changes the way you treat other people. He changes your behavior. That's the power of grace that changes you. You got to be right about Jesus. That's why Paul says that. I want to be right about Jesus. I want to know him. I, I press forward. Look what he says. I want in verse 10 of, of Philippians 3. I want to know Christ, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed to him in his death so that somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead that when I die someday Christ will raise me up just like Christ was raised up that I'll be with him forever. And then he goes on and he says not that I've already attained all of this or I've already been made perfect but I press on to take hold of that which for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold or to have attained in one verse. I'm not there yet but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should embrace this point of view. You hear that? It's about Jesus. I press on to know Jesus. I press on to do his work. I don't back up. I'm pressing forward. And it's not about me. I don't want the attention to be about me. It's about Jesus. And so if you're mature, have embrace a point of view. And if you think differently about some issue, God will reveal this to you as well. Nevertheless, we must live up to what we've already attained. Listen, we got to live up to what we've done. We can't sit back. We can't quit praying. We can't quit meeting. We can't quit worshiping. We can't quit giving the missions. We can't quit bringing our first fruits, our, our, that which pushes back the enemy. We can't stop. We got to move forward. You hear me? Now, I, I told Joel, who's recording this for me, I said, Joel, this isn't your typical devotion. This is a, this is a pep talk from a coach because that's how I pastor. I'm telling you, Pull up your bootstraps. You get on your knees and you pray. You do everything as if it's all up to you, putting effort forward, but you pray like it's all up to God. And together through his giftings, empowerment, and his spirit in you, when you will exercise that which God has given you to put your hand to, to do, God's spirit will work and we will see people come to Christ. Did you know that we've grown about 70 people since COVID started, new families, and that every week someone is responding to Jesus that's a visitor. Did you know that? Did you know that? See, we're not backing up. 
Let's be the church. Come on, church. Do it. Give like you've never given before. Pray like you've never prayed before. Get on board with missions. If you're having a hard time being regular giving, get online and set up the weekly, however you get paid, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, so it automatically comes from your checking account straight into the church checking account, and it only costs the church 30 cents. If you use a credit card, it, it costs a percentage. So if you, you know, you give a $10,000 check, you're, you're, you know, 4% of that is going to the bank. We don't want to do that. So transfer it from your checking account, right into the church and checking account. And it's very simple to do. And you can stay regular if you're not getting here regularly. All right. Are you with me? So we've looked back 30 years. I'm going to take a quick glance and say, thank you to all of you who have served. But guess what? I, we need to keep serving. So we're not going to pat ourselves on the back and go, good job, good job. And just sit there and rest and sit there like big fat cats, like we've arrived. We haven't arrived. And this facility means nothing, no matter how beautiful and wonderful it is. And it is. And we're going to build something for the glory of God. But it means nothing because it isn't the church. You're the church. I'm the church. This is a tool to use to bring people in, to educate them, to disciple them, to win them, to preach this gospel, to worship together, to pray together. Are you with me? So let's do it, church. You hear me? Let's do it. And would you share this on your Facebook page? Share it to everyone. This is going to go to everyone we can send it to. I want the message out that New Hope Assembly loves people, loves everybody, and there is truth that does not change in the Bible, and it is sent with the most love we can give. Because the most loving thing you can do is tell the person the truth. If your kids are playing in the street, you love them, you'll tell them the truth. Stay there, you're going to get run over. So we're going to preach the truth, and we're going to do it with love. We love you. I love you. The pastors love you. We care about you. Call us if we can help you. Your benevolent money went out again today and yesterday and the day before. We are helping people. Go, church. Hear me go. Let's go.